everyone, welcome back. And I am fresh off my experience at this year's Big Smoke in Las Vegas. My wife and I went out, it happens to be or coincide with our 39th wedding anniversary, November 6th. So we said, why don't we go? Met a lot of nice people. A lot of you were there that watch my videos. And I thank you so much for coming up and saying something to me. Um, I didn't really make a big presence uh, known. I mean, if someone recognized me, I wanted them to come up and see see me, uh, but uh, I didn't let many people know I was going. So I'm so happy that so many of you came up and said something. That means a lot to me. Now, this is just gonna be a short little hopefully short recap of the weekend. We arrived uh, Friday around 1130 in the morning, uh, Las Vegas time, and uh, started to look around and check things out. And we're normally pool people, uh, sun people, and they have a very nice pool there, but there wasn't gonna be any time for that now. We were there for a different reason. We scouted around to where the uh, event was gonna take place. We had early registration at one o'clock and the event started at 5.30 for the uh, uh, all access people, which we were, and this is the tickets and how, or the uh, passes and how they looked. And the arm uh, wristband that gave us access to everything. Now, the evening, the first evening if you are an all access person, uh, of course you're in line and when they open the doors, uh, we were there for both nights, Connie and I. So what they do is, instead of giving you a book of tickets to take and get the cigar from the different manufacturers, uh, one, one book for each night, they give you both books on the first night. So we had two books each, identical books, all four were the same. So in essence, uh, but by the time the night was over, we would have collected four cigars from each um, manufacturer. So that's what we did and it was hectic. Um, the um, ballroom at the Mirage, which is where it was held, it's a very big room but a lot of people are trying to get to all these manufacturers at the same time. Invariably, there is a few uh, that have extremely long lines. This year, it turned out to be the Rocky Patel booth and the La Palina booth. Another group that had a very long line was sort of a string of manufacturers that included uh, Monte Cristo and some of those others. But uh, by and large, those were the longest lines. Now, of course, you can just be patient and get through the night and you'll, you'll be fine. The, the collection of the cigars on Friday night is sort of self-explanatory. I mean, you don't need a lot of vision to see it in your mind. The next day, however, was a big deal. At least I thought so. It was the uh, uh, all access morning uh, briefings, uh, the schedule of events of the different manufacturers and how CA ran it was, uh, in my opinion, very good. Uh, we started off with a, uh, at nine o'clock with a breakfast, uh, sort of a, a light breakfast, but it was, it was conducted by um, Oliva Cigars was the sponsor. So uh, as you walked in the door, we were each received an Oliva uh, Siri O Toro. Uh, actually it was the Maduro version. And uh, shortly after that, we started to talk about the top three cigars of 2020 and cigar number three was the uh, Padron anniversary uh, Hermosa series Hermosa 
1964 anniversary series and Jorge Padron was there to speak on stage on the behalf of the Padron cigars. Very informative. All these owners or manufacturers gave very good details on their cigar. Mixing it up and, go, and then later we'll go through the other three cigars of 2020, the top three cigars. But then we got to the winner's circle where Rafael Nodal, Lido Gomez, and Corey Bappert of Oliva Cigars all spoke on what it was like when they were found out that they were the cigar of the year of their uh, respective years. Rafael Nodal, of course, won in 2019 with Aging Room. Lito Gomez in 2016 with La Florida Minicana and Corey Bappert with Oliva Cigars in 2014. All of them have had the experience of being named number one by Cigar Aficionado and what it was like and the repercussions after that. Then we moved on to the number two cigar of 2020, the Fuente Fuente Opus X Double Robusto with Rich Dalek uh, of uh, uh, of Fuente, and uh, he actually surprised everyone with a rather rare Opus X Lancero, and that was quite exciting. So we got an extra cigar there. One small change had to be made, the tail of three wrappers, uh, because of uh, unforeseen circumstances, uh, couldn't be held. So the what they did was all of the CA editors had a uh, question and answer session on stage, uh, Dave Sabana and uh, all the others, and um, pretty much answered anything you wanted to know one thing that I didn't really realize that they emphasized, and I believe them, is uh, well, two things. The They review cigars blindly. Uh, they are, remo- all bands are removed and simply a generic white band when a number is on it. And uh, someone knows what those numbers are. They say they do not until after everything's over and also um the winners of the cigar of the year do not know and they convinced me this is the case do not know that they have won uh the top spot in any particular year until literally it is announced online where you know or i know or anyone knows and then they know so that's how it that's how it works it was uh, quite interesting i thought now after um after the session with um the ca uh editors we moved on to the uh number one cigar of 2020 which of course was the ep carrillo pledge prequel with ernesto perez carrillo and uh he had some interesting things to say Again, all these cigars were given to us when we we got in the door and uh, and, and, and we were able to sample them as we went through this uh, session. Finishing up, there was a pairing of fine rum from uh, Bacardi, uh, two of their uh, newer rums, the uh, Reserva Ocho and the Reserva Diaz, eight year and 10 year rums. And it was paired with a Romeo and Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua Toro. And uh, of course, Rafael had something to do with that. So he was there to, to help with that. When all that was over, we went to lunch, which was sponsored by La Aurora Cigars. And uh, as you walked in the door, you got some cigars from them, a nice selection, a nice box. So, and the lunch was fantastic. Uh, It was just well, well done. So then you, that's it for the lunch for the morning session. So So after a short 
break in the afternoon at 5.30, it starts up again. The Saturday session. Now, since Connie and I got our books for both Friday and Saturday, on Friday, and we got our cigars on Saturday night, it's designed for the all-access people to enjoy the evening, relax, go to the event, and you have more time to enjoy the tremendously good food they had prepared. All, all stations all around the, the ballroom. And uh, you could do visit, you could visit more with the uh, manufacturers or different people there. It made it a much, much more relaxing evening. Very hectic Friday night and then very relaxing on Saturday. Now, one thing that I enjoyed was getting to meet some of the people associated with J.C. Newman cigars, Adria, who is my media contact, and Drew Newman was there. So we had a chance to meet them in person. I had corresponded with them by email over the years, but it was nice to finally meet them in person. And they brought the now famous replica of the factory, the J.C. Newman factory in the building in exact detail in a smaller version, all made out of cardboard, folds up and, and carries away, but is a spectacular display. Now, as far as what I managed to bring home with me, it's hard to say you could you're not going to make money or break even because you got your plane ticket and the tickets for the event and what have you. But this is what I came back with and it's hard to see in pictures, but that one big uh, cellophane bag is absolutely packed. And then you see the surrounding other little smaller uh, packs and the boxes from uh, La Aurora and, and on and on. So all in all, there is a lot of cigars there. So if you get a chance to go, I would I would definitely say it's worth it. Uh, some of the reviewers, sort of uh, other reviewers other than myself, sort of look at CA as a competitor of ours. I would like to think I'm big enough to be a competitor, but let's be, let's, let's be honest here. I'm a fan of cigars first and foremost and if a, a group of several thousand people can get together cigar lovers and uh, have any sort of event especially one at this level why not again it was our anniversary weekend good excuse to get out of town and get to las vegas we had a great time i'm, I'm gonna tell you we had a great time so that's sort of how the, the the weekend works in case you're thinking about going or have never been. Uh, and, 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 and even those that have been, you know this is how it works and it's, it's a pretty big deal. So that's it. That was my weekend at the Big Smoke in Las Vegas 2021. And uh, I do believe we'll go back. We'll just have to see how things play out year by year, but it was obvious that with everything that happened last year where nobody could leave and do anything, cigar lovers were ready to get out and do something again because the event was totally sold out. So that's my take on it. I enjoyed it. And we'll be back again. And I'll be back again with reviews right away this week. So thanks again to all those that said something to me there. And Maybe we'll see you there again.